hey guys welcome back to my channel in today's video we will be doing weather and specifically extreme weather it's gonna be a nice little video and before we get into it please remember to like share and subscribe we are on the road to 500 subscribers we are almost there please get me to 500 subscribers so we can get on the road to 1k thank you so much for watching yana empowers really appreciate it all right now let's get into it okay so first i'm going to define what is extreme weather and this is when a weather event is significantly different from the average or usual weather pattern this may take place over one day or a period of time so if it's significantly different for example rainfall your average rainfall you get some rain you get some winds but then you have a hurricane which is tremendously more rainfall heavier faster winds so that is an example of extreme weather so something more than the norm right all right so examples of extreme weather events include drought which is caused by a lack of rain flash floods which is caused by too much rains in a short period of time so either you're going to have a lack of rain or you're going to have too much rain in a short period of time we we'll have strong winds and storms which is what i kind of spoke about a while ago with hurricanes you have an extreme cold spell and an extreme heat wave i would know the definition of these strong winds and storms explanatory extreme cold spell so it's just straight coldness right and you have ex extreme heat wave is quite opposite to it. it's a lot of heat now what i'm going to speak about is some examples of like case studies specifically in jamaica um of where these occur when so on so the first one i'm going to talk about is a lack of rainfall which leads to drought jamaica's drought vulnerability Jamaica lies within the tropics, so we are dependent on more than one rainy season. You know, the tropics is hot, the sun is overhead, we are near the equator, so we're always hot. So we need rainy seasons, right? A deficiency in any one season can produce a damaging drought. So if we got rain three seasons for the year, three times for the year, if we lose one time, it can affect us. Now, the increase in Jamaica's population due to urbanization has led to a great increased demand for an already limited supply of water. And if you watch the urbanization video, you better understand what this is saying. Basically, because of urbanization, which is a lot of people moving into cities and towns, they are using up the water. Because if more people come, more people are going to use the water. So the amount of water that is used is going to increase. And there isn't an increasing amount of supply in water. So if persons, a lot of persons are using up this water, you have a limited supply, there's a greater demand, right? So that's an example of, you know, drought vulnerability. I don't know why I can't pronounce that word. <laughs> We've seen a little instance probably in rural areas where there's no water for irrigation on farms. We have missed the rainy season and, you know, some crops dry up, plants dry up because they're in need of water. So that's why we're vulnerable to droughts. Now let's talk about flash flooding, which is quite the opposite of droughts. That video. <clears throat> and an example of the flash flooding is in Jamaica, where over 280 roads were damaged by floods. It says heavy rainfall associated with tropical storms Eta and Zeta has affected the island since late October 2020. And this is from a news report. It says prior to flooding brought by Hurricane Eta, heavy rain from tropical storm Zeta triggered flash flooding and a deadly landslide in St. Andrew on the 23rd of October. So before we had Tropical Storm Eta or Hurricane Eta, we had Tropical Storm Zeta or Zeta. So it's just one after the other. And if we already had a flash flood warning with Zeta, imagine when Eta came, we're going to have some flash floods. It says Jamaica's Meteorological Service issued several warnings for heavy rain and flash floods over the weekend. On the 25th of October, the Met Service said that the outer bands from Tropical Storm Zeta over the Northwestern Caribbean Sea are contributing to the rainfall over Jamaica. So we see where storms and hurricanes affect flooding because it's caused by an increased amount of rainfall in a short period of time. Now the storm is forecasted to be moving away from the island, which it did because we're, we're in 2021 now. Um, but we saw where it affected us and how it affected us. 
two people died after a house in St. Andrew was destroyed by a landslide on the 23rd of October 2020. And two people died because of the landslide, sorry, which was caused by flash flooding. Right? So this immense amount of rainfall causing an overflow in water. It's just running along soil and loosening soil and you know it's running down. Just imagine it and you can see it in the video. And it affects persons, especially persons who live on flat areas or on the hillsides. It does affect them. Alright, so the next one is strong tropical depression. So a tropical depression is the first stage of a tropical weather event, right? So it's the first stage. Now these weather conditions can have you know heavy wind speeds. And despite not being as strong as a tropical storm or a full-fledged hurricane, tropical depressions can still bring rain, thunderstorms, and strong winds, which are capable of causing damage, right? Based on where it occurs. So, tropical depression, oh, it's not as strong as a hurricane. However, it's still bringing an immense amount of winds, different from normal. So, that's why it's an extreme weather event. It's not the regular amount of winds, not the regular amount of rainfall. So, we can see where it's extreme to an extent. Now, following a depression, you have a tropical storm. Now, this is, as, it's, as, as, as I said before, an upgraded tropical depression. Um, this storm has stronger wind speeds, of course, since it's upgraded. And not only that, the rain produced is considerably more than that of a depression. So the likelihood of flooding and intense wave activity is greater. So we see where we have a greater chance of flooding with a tropical storm. Now they are treated as more threatening than tropical depressions as now there is a higher possibility of incurring damages and loss of life. If it has stronger wind speeds, when a lot of roof are blow away, a lot of trees are blowing, we have the waves, we have flooding, we have a lot of water from the storms. So it is a lot going on and because of that there is a higher possibility of death or damage to property. All right, now let's talk about hurricanes. Now, if a tropical depression was that bad, then a tropical storm, can you imagine a hurricane? A hurricane is described as a storm system that has sustained wind speeds and a spiral cloud arrangement. They are considered to be the next step in a tropical storm's development and poses or possesses, sorry, all of the same damaging attributes, but on a far greater scale, which we can imagine. Now, hurricanes bring with them strong and damaging winds, heavy rainfall, thunder showers, and lightning storms, and are threatening to our safety and your lives. This is why it's considered a natural disaster because it's known to cause harm or <clears throat> damage to property. Right? And then a hurricane has five categories category one, two, three, four, and five. So if a hurricane is this damaging, imagine a category five hurricane. Right? So. And that's how it becomes even more extreme. Now, in Jamaica, we had a hurricane Gilbert. It slams into Jamaica and it kills hundreds of people. And this occurred on September 12, 1988. Now, the storm went on to cause death and destruction in Mexico and a spur a batch of tornadoes in Texas. So we see where it linked from one thing to cause another. So it caused tornadoes in Texas. And true, we are not prone to tornadoes. It didn't happen here but it did affect a number of us and it had different effects we can go on in another video when i speak about hurricanes they have different effects of hurricanes light um loss of light loss of water um damage to property cars vehicles homes um pollution in water supply and, and rivers and so on and so forth so it is a lot um Facilities by a hurricane, and all of this is just to say that it is not the average rainfall, it is more extreme, it's not the average wind speed, it's more extreme, and this makes it an extreme weather event. Now we have an extreme cold spell, and the extreme is already in there, right? So in December 2010, much of the United Kingdom was under snow, and I used a, an example of a country outside of the Caribbean because you know the Caribbean is warm. Um, so it would not be prone to cold spells so that's why I spoke on the United Kingdom but I, also, I wanted to mention it because it's an extreme event right so in December 2010 much of the United Kingdom was under snow 
Arctic air caused the temperatures to drop significantly below average. At night, the temperatures were negative 10 degrees and negative 20, 10 degrees at night. That is so cold, right? It's below zero. It's very cold and it was not what the United Kingdom was used to. So that's why it was an extreme cold spell. All right, so we have okay. So we have an extreme heat wave. So while Europe is experiencing heat waves, North America, Central America, and the Caribbean are also at risk. So we're not common for heat waves. We're already in a hot country, but we're also at risk for it. Now the situation could worsen between July and August with adverse impact on human health. Now we see where our summers are getting hotter. Um, we're having longer summers. It's really hotter than the average summers based on statistics. So we can see where we're prone to getting heat waves. Now the view of current heat waves in Europe and predictions that this phenomenon will hit various parts of the Americas, the Pan-American Health Organization, World Health Organization, that's P-A-H-O, W-H-O, is urging countries in the region to be prepared due to the impact that this could have on people's health, including the risk of death. We know that heat waves can cause a lot of damage, heat strokes, persons just faint, skin cancer because of the UV rays of the sun. You know, it's a, it's a lot going on. Okay, so that is the end of some examples of extreme weather and where they occur and some instances. I hope you got enlightened on what exactly extreme weather is, why it occurs, um, where it occurs, or examples you can speak about. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Our quote of the day is, the roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. And I think I used this quote before, but it's true. So the roots of education are bitter and the fruit is sweet. Um, thank you so much for watching. Remember, we're on the road to 500 subscribers. See you in the next video. Bye, guys.